It's mm. this piece has this has been a year collaboration, mm. but it's been so genuine because it's sisters coming mm. together, mm. loving our community. That's what black women do is we love our community. We love our people. And so when we're able to open up our access to who our people are, who our community is. It's beautiful. The only people that are going to save black folks in this world are black folks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Seko Simpson. If this is your first time checking out my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe. I am always happy when I have to bring you something from my region, central region of Ghana. And today, I'm very lucky. I'm a lucky man. You know, I think, I don't know, but I may have twins next year or next two years. Well, because I'm sitting with these beautiful queen mothers from the Asebu traditional area. And you know what, we've been talking about the collaboration with Africans from the diaspora and Africans. And I have here with me four queen mothers. And then we're going to talk about the collaboration between the Africans and the motherland and then the Africans from the diaspora. What exactly are we doing? It wouldn't only be about entertainment, but we can also look at what we can do to project these communities. So right now I have here with me these beautiful uh, queen mothers that I will love them to introduce themselves. Then we talk about what we are going to talk about today. So let's start from the other side. Your name? My name is Nana Achaba Pakwenua the second, Adontihima of Asebu traditional area. My name is Nana Okom Egwa the second, Amos Mahima and Nufahima of Asebu traditional area. Hi, my American name is Nia Weeks, but my Ghanaian name is Nana Efwachwe the first of a Sable traditional area in Putsubu. And um, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana in the States. Right. And then, so that is how we do it. Uh, when there's a bigger person, that person comes last. So when she speaks, then we can continue this conversation. Oh, that's it. Mizunizi, na na mifu wa mitodo ibasa, asebu oman hima. My name is na na mifu the third, asebu paramount queen mother. Thank you very much. So when we have the queen mother, the paramount queen mother in our midst, it means that whatever we're going to talk about is legit. That is what you need to hear. Now let's come to all of us. Uh, like I mentioned, there's been collaborations, even with myself. I'm a teacher by profession. So I bring a lot of uh, diasporas to my school. They've been supporting me. We've built a library. And then we still telling people to bring us uh, library books. Tell us a little bit about your experience when you came to Ghana this year. This year. Wow, my experience coming to Ghana this year, it is so hard to encapsulate that in a few words, in a few moments. Um, first word that comes to mind, though, is breathtaking and beyond what I thought it would be. Um, when my partner brought me here, um, Kwame, um, I did not know what to expect. And when I walked into space with Queens, I had never seen a black queen. I had never seen an African queen. <laughs> oh. And so I'm, I walk in and they come down from in the castle, yeah. come down from the stairs, regal and beautiful. I it took my breath away. Yeah. And then when they invited me to be a part of this space, mm -hmm. a part of this community, it was humbling. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that we don't, we think we know mm -hmm. about the diaspora in the States. We mimic what we think we're supposed to do. And, but what actually, it, it, it's greater than that. Yeah. The people are brilliant and beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the traditions are incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's this idea often in the diaspora that, Africa needs to be saved, and that's not true. Yeah. We need to be saved <laughs> by coming to Africa. Yeah. But what it, it's just access to resources. Mm -hmm. That's it. But the way they hold community, the way love is, the safety, mm -hmm. the joy, the, the beauty mm -hmm. that's encapsulated here, it's beyond what we could even imagine. And wow. so, you know, Ghana is everything, and everything is Ghana. Ghana. And that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been hearing this all the time. And Ghana is the gateway to Africa. So if you're coming to Africa and then you choose to come to Ghana, it means that you are blessed. You understand? So let me ask my awesome queen mother right here. 
the paramount queen mother of Asibu Traditional Council. We have a lot of events happening. There are collaborations going on. I don't want to mention all of them, but from your point of view, what have we done? What can we do as queen mothers in Ghana? Even let's, let's take in Ghana as a whole. Let's not concentrate on Asibu. Queen mothers in Ghana, what can we do to help the African diaspora come to the motherland and then we can work together? Thank you very much once again, Yoko. I will say if you are given a gate to walk through, whatever is there, don't leave it behind. Because um, when I had the opportunity to visit them outside Ghana to Louisiana, New Orleans, I try as much as possible to convince my people there for them to know that they have a place here because yeah. that place really is not their place. They have a place. They should come to their motherland. And that is what I look forward to. And again, me having access to them, I have to take my people there to learn mm -hmm. and also for them to come and learn, being exchanging. Yes. That is what I look forward and that is what I'm pursuing now. Okay. Yeah, that is my aim. And that is my collab okay. for now. <laughs> All right. So if we are looking at bringing them here to learn and we're going there to learn, definitely uh, my awesome queen mothers should have come to a consensus as to this is what we want to do. So for now, what are we doing as a collective effort between you and her? What are we doing? Well, there's so much that we're doing, um, but I'll just take this particular visit, for example. Um, this is the first time that I was able to bring my children oh, uh, okay. to Ghana and my father. Yeah. Um, and bringing my children here, they're able to listen differently. They yeah. understand the world differently. They know what the young people need. And the honor that Nana has bestowed on me is yeah. working with the youth. Okay. And so and the youth they're the ones that are going to be able to change everything. They're going to be the ones that, that are really going to bridge those gaps. And so one thing that we offered is they're putting together a WhatsApp group mm -hmm. of their friends and student leaders from Kutubu. Oh, okay. And they're going to be working together, teaching each other traditions okay. and understanding of each other's spaces. Um, we're building out programs to do sports and, and schools. There's a school being the first vocational school on this side is being built in Putsubu, right? Okay. And they had a groundbreaking ceremony not too long ago. Of course, we're going to bring in professors and universities and opportunities and just opening the door back and forth. It's, when we talk about opening the door to Ghana, there's also a door open for Ghanaians yeah. in the States. And this piece has, this has been a year collaboration, yeah. but it's been so genuine because it's sisters coming yeah. together, yeah. loving our communities. That's what black women do is we love our community, we love our people. And so when we're able to open up our access to who our people are, who our community is, it's beautiful. The only people that are gonna save black folks in this world are black, black folks. <laughs> <laughs> and so building these bridges and opening these doors and creating these spaces and opportunity, I, I'm really excited to see what these young people do with it. And when we have this conversation in five years, in 10 years, it's gonna be like, what else are we doing? Yeah. Like we're gonna be celebrating all the great accomplishments that we've made. Great, before before I let my queen, uh, Paramount uh, Queen Mother talks, um, you working with the youth. I know her type of thing and then that of here is way different. How are they collaborating so far? I will say it's different in the aspect of tradition and okay. the way they've grown up. But young people desire the same things, okay. right? They all, we, we had a conversation at her birthday party. Um, she turned 15 here in Ghana. Oh, and birthday. friends and family brought 50, about eight girls over okay. um, that were, they had never met before. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about sports and music. And okay. they were talking about wanting to be doctors and lawyers okay. and teachers. They all have the same desire mm -hmm. to have a good life and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Now, how to work together to figure yeah. out, this is what I know. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, wait, you live in a world in a space where there's no microaggressions? Mm -hmm. What? You know, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. I get to feel safe. You know, you live in the world in a space that has access to science a little mm -hmm. bit differently. Let me show you how. And so the collaboration is really expanding mm -hmm. what each other knows mm -hmm. and expanding what each other feels and has opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. But their desire for life is the same. It's the same. All right, beautiful. I love that. You know, uh, when I was young, we used to have this pen pal thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if 
um, I remember, yeah, we were, we were writing letters to the outsiders and they were writing the same to us. Now, as a teacher, one of the goals that I want to see being achieved in Ghana is having a lot of vocational technical institutions. So when you mention that you are collaborating to start a vocational school, I'm like, this is it. This is it. Um, anytime my students are, um, you know, going to the uh, senior high, I tell them, yo, you can choose to go to the vocational school, go learn either refrigeration, carpentry, mm -hmm. because at the end of it, I feel Africa needs that to develop. Yes. Now, my queen mother, what have we done so far? What are we doing to make sure that this vocational school come into play? What can I also do? What can the people of Kutubiu, a Cebu traditional area, and then the, uh, the diaspora community, what can we all do together to make sure that this vocational school come into place? Once again, thank you. I would say for my people, the Putubu people, a Cebu traditional states, we should be united. Because if we are united, we will be supportive. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. And again, what I am doing is to search to get the finances or to get those who are really ready to help okay. build the structures. Okay. And then we'll fill in with our people. Mm -hmm. That is what we are doing right now. And for now, since the structures is not done or the vocational school has not come to life, what we are doing right now is helping them as well. The little that we can, okay, if you want to learn a trade, mm -hmm. if you want to learn a skillful way of being a sprayer, whatever, people come to me mm -hmm. behind, oh, Nana, I want to do this, this and that. If the money is there or if the effort is there, I help. Okay. And if I have to work through my people, my sisters and brothers there, I contact them and they help as well. So that is what we are putting in place right now. And it is 50-50, but we know that whatever putting in place is actually working. And we so soon, let's say, we've given ourselves some time, mm -hmm. the vocational school, and the first ever school that we are going to build, the entrepreneurship school, yeah. is also going to come on. That's all. And I mean, for foundation is also reaching out to our brothers and sisters there, that whatever help that they want to still do, they should continue doing it. We know they can do more for us. Let's say when my sister, my um, youth um, queen mother came, Nana Ifwa Chere came and she was able to bring out some uh, stationaries for the youth. And it was, it was lovely. At least, every, even if it is not, you got, you got a sanitary something okay. for the women. And I was happy. At least we've been able to do something. The health fair, yes. Well, GH, he did well. well when I, yes. When I was having my one year, we, we, we had um, health screening, we had like five doctors mm. to help us to the extent that we, he brought barbers. Oh. oh, yes. On my one year anniversary, it was a big program. Yeah, he really did. He did a good work for us. Thank you. Thank you, LGH. <laughs> yes. And um, my, before my one year anniversary, we've been able to help more than 20 youths mm -hmm. to secure a job. Okay. at Accra okay. and it was, they were paying them very well and I mean uh, yeah, yes yeah, I need to be up right. yes yeah, and we know you know as time goes on we look forward for more okay. yeah okay. beautiful I love I love the conversation so far uh, we are looking at the best way to improve uh, the economy in these uh, communities now is the African diaspora community ever ready to be doing such? Or you are the only one ready to do this? Oh, wait. Oh, I love <laughs> this question. Everybody's ready right okay. now. <laughs> you know, we are so disenchanted okay. with our experience in America. Okay. Um, the reality is, is that white supremacy in America is choking us. Yeah. You know, the number one killer of black women in the States is stress. Stress. And stress comes from racism. You know, it comes, it gets in our bones. Yeah. So we want to figure out ways to go back mm -hmm. home. And this is home. I've been here three times. Mm -hmm. And every time I post, 
everybody is like, how do I come? What can I do? How can I support? How can I help? Right. And so it's it's a it's a privilege for me to be in this role, to be able to work with such a brilliant woman. This woman is brilliant. She came to, you know, it's really interesting because when she came to New Orleans, she came, she went to schools in New okay. Orleans, cool. right? And these children, their hearts were hurting because of the what they experienced in the States. And so they have this, African queen mm -hmm. in their school. Oh, that by <laughs> itself, like, you can see their faces. <laughs> boss. <Yeah. laughs> and, <laughs> boss, boss, exactly. And there were moments that there, she had a kente cloth in her hand. Kente, yeah. And one of the little boys said, what is that? She goes, do you like it? Here you go. Ooh. Oh, he caught it. And all the other kids were like, wait, we want that. Yeah. And he, oh, can I, can I, and then the, can I come to Ghana? Yeah. What can I okay. do? There okay. was one young man who had so much trouble in school and was not behaving well. And she made him cry. She made him see himself bigger yeah. than what he was. And so that was her gift to us. Yeah. And so everyone's like, how do we give that gift yeah. back? And so everyone is ready. People need to know how. Right. People need to know how to create ways to yeah. make the things that they want to happen yeah. actually happen. Yeah. I know they want to come teach. No, they want to come give uh, my, my uh, partner and I. We do a program where we where we we're also filmmakers oh, okay. and we teach kids how to be filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Right. And tell their own stories, because when other people tell your stories, you know, this yeah. as a blogger, yeah, don't let nobody tell they your tell story. Exactly. Them. Exactly. Yeah. And as black folks, as Africans, as Africans across the world, we need to change the narrative of who we are. Right. And we're the only ones that can do that. So teaching these kids, we're doing a program on Thursday. Yeah. We're going to be doing, you know, it's going to be cool. It's going to be videos yeah, of these yeah. kids working together mm -hmm. so we can show like yeah. this is something that's possible right. this is within your reach and i'm telling you within the next couple of years it's going to be a complete exchange back and forth we're going to see a whole different experience of african americans coming in here from the diaspora and, and not just african americans yeah. you know from the islands yeah. right haiti you know caribbean. and in the caribbean yeah. yeah all of that it's, we're going to be one united black community all over the place and it's going to be beautiful so yeah. new orleans and cape coast are actually sister cities yeah mm -hmm. I, I think that was like it said it's like two years yeah, ago a couple of years yeah. ago right our current mayor first black woman mayor yeah. latoya yeah, Kentrell, yeah, came, yeah, signed yeah, yeah. in. i made a video of that yeah. yes well nana was there when they brought brazil in mm -hmm. as a sister city so she was there with all the other sister cities okay. when she was in new orleans okay. and while she was there bridging that gap between yeah, yeah. sister cities and so here we are going to be built so like i said even bigger we're not we're more than just the united states and africa we're a global community mm -hmm. and black folks have been displaced all over the place and so we're going to be more than sister cities we're going to be Sisters across the globe, yeah. and that's going to be kind of incredible to build that and be a wow. part of that. I wish, I wish, I wish I was a girl so that I would be like a sister in this whole community. You know, we can grow like <laughs> yeah, I'm unique. Hey, I'm unique in my own way. Yes, yes. I'm also doing stuff with my yes. brother. Like he's yeah. Yes. I mean, we had a conversation, yes. Mr. Bix, yes. for you know putting me through this. Africans here, when we travel outside, we have this perception. Okay, I brought you America. This thing. What was it like for you for the first time when you went there, you met the, you met her, you met the other kids? How was it like? What would you say was the difference? There was no difference. Hello. Okay. Hi. Yeah, there was no difference. I told her that I feel like I'm home because okay. New Orleans is just like Cape Coast. I was oh, like, okay. this is Ghana. Something this is Ghana. Like, okay. Yes, this is Ghana. I, I, this is like Kotokraba. That was what I was doing. Okay. And she was like, eh, hey, Nana, yeah, I said it. And the people there are just like us. The reception was warm. Okay. It doesn't matter where you come from, but you know, we blacks, we have this connection. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've noticed it. Yeah. If you step out, I'm there, say, man, kind of fancy. Kind of fancy. Say, mm -hmm. you are know, far You and I, or you're black, also you're black. Yeah, feeling it. Different. Yes, different. Yeah. I mean, the feeling is mutual. Yeah. You see, when I met with them, ah, it was home. Home away from home. Like, I was like, this is my people. Yeah. Let me do my thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, I'm here. But you should know, I yes. am the boss boss. Yeah. And they were like, hey, then I, then I say now. And I was, yes, I'm just like you. Yeah. We are all the same. So what, there was nothing, that, I, I didn't have any perception. 
what I, I was looking forward to, and I know I'm going to achieve it, is to be able to take some of my people there mm -hmm. to learn something different, okay. that being academically. Okay. And they will bring it down to my, our motherland mm -hmm. so that they can also help. Yes, the, yes okay. that is my dream. So I had nothing. I didn't have... They they don't even want me to work. I was like, hey, <laughs> they say when you can you can work and get money. So they say, hey, Nana, wait, I'm coming. And I check your phone. I sent you something. Hey, hey, how much? Five hundred dollars. Hey, man, why? Oh, yeah, I was right. like, wow. These people will want to hook me up. And my uncle, uncle Mo, he's all over there. Please, can you come to um, Atlanta? Hey, please, hello. This is the Paramount Queen Mother of Facebook Tradition. She's my niece. And I was like, uncle, you are killing me. <laughs> I was all over. Yeah. I was all over. So I never had any perception apart from me giving to them what we have yeah, and right. also taking that they have okay. to our motherland. Yeah. That was my perception. Thank you very much for putting this through. So traditionally, uh, when we are having a meeting and somebody must take a leave, uh, definitely she would have to ask permission. And the permission is granted without even asking because she's a paramount queen mother. She doesn't need our permission. Yes, I'm so, the boss. Yeah. <laughs> so you are permitted to take your leave. Thank you so much. All right, you're Thank welcome. You. It was nice having you. So All right.